Hey, Justin, welcome. Thanks for uh, coming on air with us. I was just wondering, I know you've been here a hundred times, but how's the transition been in New York so far? Uh, it's been great. You know, it's, um, I actually lived here for an off season uh, a few years back, so I kind of had an understanding of the city. Um, but uh, to be here as a player is pretty cool, man. It's, uh, you know, it's one of those things that you, you dream about as a kid. Um, you know, to be playing in front of this, uh, you know, in front of this fan base has just been incredible. I was thinking about uh, last season. The prior two seasons, you have Tommy John, and you have a year like you had last year. I mean, arguably one of the greatest years the starting pitchers ever had. At some point, was it a little surreal, or was it just <laughs> confirmation of all the hard work you'd put in? I kind of a combination of both. I mean, you know how it goes. You put in all this hard work, and you you don't really know how it's going to pay off until you until you go apply it in a game. And um, you know, the season got off to a good start. Um, so obviously, that's you know, you're kind of off to the races at that point and um, just trying to maintain what you're doing and, and, and keep your mechanics in sync. So I guess uh, on one hand, I, it was like I, I did a ton of work um, and I was expecting it to pay off because I felt a lot like myself. You know, I, uh, I, didn't, I didn't have any like uh, bad reactions to the surgery or anything. So I was hopeful that I was going to pitch like I had left off. And, um, you know, but in the middle of the season, it, Especially towards the end there, you know, you kind of like, wow, that, you know, that put together a pretty good one. That's pretty amazing, right? Um, the first time I ever started to watch you pitch a lot, started doing your games, I noticed that you started, you did a lot of things that pitchers that I had grown up, grown up with did. They'd get ready and they were 100% ready for the game, but they would consciously get hitters out with an eye on getting big outs or going deeper in the game and sometimes upping that velocity like you did in Cincinnati. Uh, was that something you consciously did? Someone taught you or it was just part of your innate ability? I think it's just something I learned along the way. Um, I, for one, I've never been somebody who right at the beginning of the game I can throw as, as hard as I can at the end. It takes me a while. It takes my body a while to like get going. I don't know why that is. Um, but when I was younger, you know, I would come out and throwing 96, 97 pretty early. There was a game in Boston after a few years in the league, and um, we needed a longer start from me. We, the bullpen was really taxed. And I went out there and, and pitched really poorly the first three innings and threw like, uh, I think like 65 or 70 pitches in three innings. And I was like, man, I need to at least try to get through five or six here. So I completely dialed down my velocity on purpose to try to just get some balls in play. Because at this point, I think the game was pretty much out of in hand and, 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 and I just needed to get innings, it didn't matter. So I actually, in that same game, I threw a change up harder than I threw a fastball. I just, I, I threw a fastball at 89 miles an hour, just, just trying to locate and getting guys out. And the first inning I went out and did that, I forget, I forget who was up. I think it was Euclid, maybe Poppy, and um, I don't know who the, who the last guy was, but I think I had a five pitch inning. It was just like, you know, just kind of like putting the ball where I wanted. And so that was kind of a light bulb moment for me um, where I said, you know, I think maybe not that slow, but I think I can try to pitch a little bit early in games and um, and save save some uh, save some of those better fastballs for later in the game if things go well or if things go poorly I can go to the well then and uh, so I started trying to apply that and it just kind of really took off I mean I I, I, I was able to do that really well and um, just kind of ran with it feels like a Zach Grenke game now right where he can throw his change yeah. up sometimes yeah. harder than his fastball yeah you know the game has changed a lot as you know I mean you know the balls are flying out of the yard at a faster rate than ever has before. It's, it's I, I actually, you know, I, I've kind of reverted back a little bit to the older way where you know in today's game you you, you can't really pitch as much as you used to be able to. You can't yeah. just like say here's your fastball 2-0 down and away. Go ahead and take your base hit to right field or left field and you know you know those guys are if they lift it even if it's opposite field if they lift it at a at the right you know, uh, uh, exit velocity, it's a home run. So now you got to miss bats in almost every single count. So it's a little different now. When, when did you realize, or go back, who was telling you or did you just see it with your eyes that hitters' approach to the game was different, hitters' approach to you and what they were really trying to do up there as opposed to put the ball in play? Yeah. Everyone was truly, really trying to hit the ball out of the ballpark. Yeah, um, you know, it's been an interesting time. I, I, I guess, you know, in any... If anybody plays as long as I have the game, I'm sure it changes a lot. But um, I feel like this has been one of the most dramatic shifts in baseball in my in my era in the game, going from you know back to 2005 and six, my my first couple of years. Um, you know, it, it was the older school of baseball, and then analytics started taking over, and it changed things so quickly. I mean, I to your question, I, I think the, the analytics started pointing out approaches and, and guys 
that were trying to do certain things and their weaknesses really started to stick out. It wasn't the old school way of like this like dance kind of of, of pitching um, and trying to find your weaknesses and you're trying to cover them up. It, it turned into like, I already know yours, you know mine. <laughs> and you know, if I do my job better than you, I'll probably get you out. Um, you know, so, but it, I, I think it's also the pendulum shifting back a little bit. Um, I, I, I think, I hope, yeah. anyway. So what do you think? I saw you early in your career, I see you pitch now. I haven't seen much of a change, but are there things you do better today than you did at the beginning of your career? I mean, I think I definitely understand myself better. Um, I understand what makes me successful. Um, you know, I, I uh, on the mound and off the mound. Um, yeah, uh, you know, I, I think um, just a, a little more refined when I'm like scouting and you know, using analytics to my advantage, uh, things have changed quite a bit. I mean, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, change anything about the past. I think the way I used to pitch, which was just kind of like instinctual, just go out there and grip it and rip it, yeah. you know, as a young kid, hair on fire. Read about uh, Yeah, yeah, just like let the game dictate how I pitch. Um, you know, that's how you learn. That's how I learned to get through a lineup three or four times and get deep into games. Um, you know, and then you kind of add that in with this new analytic approach and I can go out there with all of the information I, I want or could ever need, but then when I step foot on the mound, I still have that backdrop of all just my instincts that I, that I accrued over the years. With so much success in Detroit, you come to that moment where you have to decide if you're going to yeah. go to another team. You end up going to Houston probably one of the greatest moves you can make for your career. Yeah. Um, the, the consensus was you went to this highly analytical team and they opened up a box that you had not thought about. Um, is that true or was it a combination of hearing stuff that you could use but also like always disregarding stuff yeah. that you knew was not right for you? Um, you know it, it actually <laughs> it goes back a little bit before Houston. Um, there was a, 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 a year, it was uh, 14 or 15, um, I think it was more 14. Mm -hmm. The first year of my career that like, my body started, like, it, it, I wasn't... I wasn't, wasn't responding. Uh, it wasn't, I, was, I was getting really sore. I was hurt when I was pitching. It, was, it just wasn't right. And um, after one of these games, um, things weren't going very well. And I went in and uh, Brad Osmus uh, asked me about my pitch selection. And I told him, you know, tell me, tell me the pitch that you're talking about and I'll tell you why I threw it and what I what I saw before and what I saw after and he was like okay well you know you're not throwing 100 anymore like you used to so I think you know you need to do a little more scouting and here's some of the things I used to look at as a catcher uh -huh. and that was the first time where I was like introduced to some numbers that um, or I needed introduction yeah. to some numbers that could help me so obviously Detroit being a bit behind back then um, analytically uh, but I kind of got my foot in the door of looking at some analytic stuff, and then the trade to Houston happens, and go to you know go from probably one of the uh, the worst analytic yeah. teams at the time, and yeah. um, you know to the best, and it was really quite simplistic. Um, they sat me down and they said, "Okay, here's your two seam fastball. Here's your four seam fastball. Your four seam is one of the best in baseball. Your two seam is quite average, and you're just doing a, a favor to the hitter." And I'm like, okay. <laughs> was, that's a hard lesson to hear, isn't it? It really was quite easy for <laughs> yeah. me because I always, I always just assumed like two seams to arm side, four seams to glove side, and but I didn't know. Nobody had ever told me, and this is the advantage of analytics. Nobody right. told me that my fastball, my four seam, was so elite, like the best in baseball. No, I never knew that. So if you have a pitch that's the best or one of the best in the game, just throw that more. Yeah. You know, the, the, the whole point of analytics for me as a pitcher, besides some of the other, you know, uh, spin metrics and all that stuff is, is like, don't do favors to the hitter, you know, make them get out of their game plan. You know, don't throw them a pitch that is average. You know, my two seam, even though it had good velocity, yeah. had an average movement profile. It, it helped them square the ball up. So that was pretty much you know, the first meeting, and then just like, okay, light bulb, easy. I'll just stop throwing two seams. Wow. I've only thrown like one or two two seams since, since that meeting. That, that's amazing. Every time I have this conversation, I get extremely jealous, to tell you the truth. Um, I'm gonna, <laughs> it, it's helpful, yeah. Yeah, let's, let me um, make it easy here for a couple of questions. Quick hitters, I'll mention a name. You tell me what they meant to you, All right. mean to you. Jimmy Leland. Ah, uh, man, he's the best. The, uh, obviously, my manager for, my first manager for him was there for a long time, and um, he seems funny to say now, took a leap of faith on me um, as a rookie and uh, really decided to take me on as a young kid who 
had good stuff, but really didn't know much about baseball. And um, you know, I, I'm so thankful for him, and um, we keep in touch all the time. I, I love Jim. Uh, Miguel Cabrera, uh, the best. I mean, just the, those like that decade in Detroit when we were together. Just I mean, he was just unbelievable. Money. Uh, your teammate again, Max Scherzer. Uh, again, uh, ultimate competitor. I. I I love watching Max compete. Um, I'm thankful to be uh, back on a team with him and, and get to, uh, you know, we kind of went our separate ways and have built a career of our own. And, and I'm really happy to be back here with him and see him work and see what he's learned since we knew each other way back when. Shohei Otani. <laughs> a freak. <laughs> so after Tommy John, so I'd missed almost, you know, two full years yeah. basically. And the rules changed in that time frame where, you know, you could hit and pitch and, and they wouldn't have to remove the DH, That's right, you know, yeah. they basically show Shohei Otani rule. rule yeah. So um, when I came back, opening day was in Anaheim, and that was the first time I watched him go out and throw 100 in the first inning. The stadium's going nuts. And he literally walks off the mound, goes right to the on-deck circle. He's leading off the game, and he's putting on his BGs and walks up there to hit. <laughs> and the stadium's going nuts again. I'm like, this is just absolutely incredible. I get chill bumps, man. This is just insane. Um, you know, it's unprecedented when you had the surgery at 39 years old, 38 years old. And I know that your family has become a big part of uh, what you do off the field, certainly, but also how you feel after a game off the field as well. <laughs> but how big of a part did they play as far as those lonely times when you're grinding yeah. and you don't you don't know if you're going to see yeah. um, the end of the rainbow? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just such a blessing. I mean. This game is really difficult. You know, you have years like last year where everything goes great. And then, you know, you have years that not everything's perfect. You know, you're not going to have a perfect year every year. But um, as you know, like you said, you're, sometimes when it's not going great, you're just kind of in the grinder and, and mentally just kind of spinning and always thinking about how to get out of it. I have a hard time sleeping and it's just like you're recounting everything. And then I wake up the next day and, you know, you wake up and immediately your brain is thinking about it again. And then I walk out and my daughter's there and runs and hugs me. And it's just, you know, it really helps you, um, I think, separate what happens here and home life. And I think that's a, it's a huge thing that you need to be able to do because, um, you know, it, you can't be on like this all the time. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a big help. So finally, I wanted to ask you one question. I think people that are in the middle of a career like yours, don't want to talk about after the career is done and all the things that people assume, Hall of Fame and all of that stuff about your legacy. But more importantly, what do you want your teammates to say about you when it's all done and you've retired and someone asks them um, about Justin Verlander, what did he mean to you? I mean, I, I you know, I think I, I, I want to be somebody who leads by example. I want to be somebody who uh, does things the right way. Um, is helpful to my teammates and, and more importantly can can be a leader um, not necessarily uh, a leader of the team uh, that, I, to me that's usually a position player or yeah. starting pitchers you know yeah. we're one every five days um, but somebody who every person I played with would say we want that guy on the mound any any day all day and um, you know bullpen save the bullpen and and just all the little things that we can do as starting pitchers to help the team and then on the other four days you know, somebody that my teammates can say they enjoyed being around and, um, um, you know, liked having on their team. Well, I'm sure that's 100%. Thank you very Absolutely. much. Yeah, thanks, Ron. Have a great year and great uh, health. Appreciate it, Ron. Thank All you. Right.